I want to ask you a question. Do you think anyone could be redeemed? Genuine question, can anyone be redeemed? If not, where is the point of no return? When does an individual become a monster? And when the individual does become a monster, is there any redemption for them other than death? Let's say one individual, driven by the death of his family, wages war against those responsible. This war not only results in the deaths of those responsible, those, mind you, who rightfully deserve to die, but it also resulted in the deaths of hundreds of thousands of innocent people. Can this individual be redeemed? Do they truly deserve a second chance? Does Kratos, the man, the demigod, the father? That theme of second chances and redemption is a very prevalent concept in 2018's God of War reboot. In it, Kratos has left his life of god killing in Greece and hopped over to Norway to pursue a calm and quiet life with his new wife and son. However, after Kratos' wife dies, her final wish asks Kratos and their son, Atreus, to bring her ashes to the highest peak in all the realms. This journey results in many struggles for the two, but is ultimately good for them both as they each learn that their missing piece resides in each other. Atreus teaches his father how to be human, while Kratos teaches his son how to be a god. They are each other's second chance. While the series is mostly known for high-octane bloody combat and god-killing, this story decides to ease up a bit and really take a look back on Kratos and ask the question, does he deserve a second chance? So in today's video, we're going to analyze the story of God of War and break down the narrative to truly understand its deeper meanings. This video will be broken up into two parts, a brief narrative synopsis followed by my analysis. If you wish to skip to any parts in the video, there will be timestamps in the description. Many years after defeating the Greek gods and destroying most, if not all, of Greece, Kratos now lives in Midgard. He marries a woman named Faye, and together they have a son named Atreus. Kratos has decided to raise his son as a mortal and not tell him of his godhood. Due to the conflicting mental state of a god believing himself to be mortal, Atreus becomes sickly and weakened throughout his childhood. Years later, Faye dies and after cremating her body, Kratos is met by the god Baldur, who knows of Kratos' godhood and wants something. The two fight, resulting in Kratos seemingly killing Baldur, after which Kratos and Atreus begin their journey to honor Faye's last wish, to scatter her ashes at the highest peak in all the realms. Along the way, they meet the Witch of the Woods, aka the Goddess Freya, and eventually reach the Lake of Nine and meet the World Serpent, Jormungandr. Reaching Midgard's peak, they find the god Mimir trapped inside a tree. He tells them that the highest peak in all the realms is actually in Jotunheim, the realm of the giants. However, the giants blocked travel there decades ago. Knowing of another way, but unable to leave, Mimir instructs Kratos to behead him and have Freya resurrect his head so that he may accompany them. He does so and is successfully resurrected. In search of components to open Jotunheim's portal, Kratos, Atreus, and Mimir are attacked by Magni and Modi, the sons of Thor. After Kratos kills Magni, Modi flees but later ambushes the trio. Kratos fights him off but Atreus collapses, overcome by the illness due to the contradiction of a god believing himself to be mortal. Taking Atreus to Freya, she offers to help him and instructs Kratos to retrieve the heart of the Keeper that protects the Bridge of the Damned located in Hell. And that's Hell with one L for all you Norse nerds out there. With the Leviathan Axe being useless in Hell, Kratos returns home and digs up his past and uses his old weapons, the Blades of Chaos. Killing the bridge keeper and taking his heart, Freya revives Atreus and Kratos tells him the truth of his godhood. After learning the truth, Atreus becomes increasingly more arrogant and against Kratos' orders, murders a weakened Modi, who had just been beaten by Thor for not avenging Magni. At Midgard's peak, Kratos and Atreus are ambushed by Baldur, resulting in Jotunheim's portal being destroyed. The fight results in them all being sent to Hell, where Atreus, now confronted with his actions, realizes he's been acting like a dick and makes amends with Kratos. While in Hell, they also learn that Freya is Baldur's mother and that she cast a spell of invulnerability on him, meaning he can't die or feel anything. Returning to Midgard, Mimir realizes there's another way to reach Jotunheim, but he needs his missing eye, located in the statue of Thor that Jormungandr ate. After obtaining the eye from the world serpent's stomach, they are attacked by Baldur once more, but Freya intervenes to protect her son. During the fight, Baldur is pierced by Atreus' mistletoe arrow, breaking Freya's spell. After Baldur is defeated, he is given an opportunity to surrender now that he finally has his wish. He, however, still holds resentment towards his mother and attempts to kill Freya. Kratos, wanting to end the cycle of children of gods killing their parents, kills Baldur, saving Freya. Heartbroken, Freya swears vengeance on Kratos, calling him a monster that will never change. Hearing this, Kratos finally tells Atreus about his past and how he killed his own father, Zeus. Atreus comments on the cycle of violence, to which Kratos tells him to be better and learn from his mistakes. Now, finally able to enter Jotunheim, Kratos and Atreus find the realm to be abandoned. They enter a temple with a mural depicting their adventures, as well as learn that Fae was actually a giant. 
Also, for those who didn't play the game and don't know much about Norse mythology, giant doesn't mean they are necessarily big. Some are, but for the most part, it's just the name of a race of people. Following the mural further, they realized Baldur was actually after Faye the whole time, due to her ability to see into the future. However, he was completely unaware she was actually dead. They reach the highest peak in all the lands and fulfill their promise to Faye and spread her ashes as they overlook a valley of giant corpses. As they're leaving, Atreus is confused as to why the murals depicting him kept referring to him as Loki. Kratos tells him that's the name his mother initially wanted for him, but they went with Atreus instead to honor a Spartan he once knew. Returning to Midgard, they see that Baldur's death has caused the start of Fimblewinter, the prophesied beginning of Ragnarok, the end of the world. Throughout the whole game, Kratos is met by multiple dark reflections of himself. Atreus is brash, quick to anger, and easily lost in it. Baldur is lost in the past, focused entirely on getting revenge against his mother for her wrongdoings against him. Even Freya is so blinded by the death of her son to realize Kratos saved her, causing her to pledge her undying revenge against him. All these reflections help Kratos grow as a person. As I said before, a main factor of this story is how Atreus teaches Kratos how to be human once more. We don't know how long it's been since the last God of War. A decade? A century? We don't know. But what we do know is in his prior adventures, Kratos forfeit all his humanity to become a killing machine. He even mentions himself that he made a deal with a god that cost him his soul. He's hollow. He sees himself only as what he was made to be. A monster. With Athena and Freya calling him such. There's no way you can hide, Spartan. Put as much distance between you and the truth as you want. It changes nothing. Pretend to be everything you are not. Teacher. Husband. Father. But there is one unavoidable truth you will never escape. You cannot change. You will always be a monster. I know. You were just an animal. Passing on your cruelty and rage, you will never change. As time passed and Kratos found himself in Midgard, he, for the first time in years, had a chance to breathe. Faye, while we don't know much about her, helped ease Kratos' pain. The whole reason Kratos began his journey against the Pantheon of Olympus was all because Ares tricked him into killing his family. This whole journey into hell was solely due to Kratos losing the ones he loved. Now, after years of searching, he finally gets to try again. However, the tragedy of the situation comes in the realization Kratos has about his prior family's deaths. They died because he was tricked by a god. Ares saw love for one's family as a weakness hindering his servant from becoming a great warrior. That's why he tricked Kratos into killing his family. This fear of losing one's family due to gods caused Kratos, a god, to keep his son at arm's length to save him from the monster. While Kratos finally has what he wants, a family, he can't enjoy them because of what he fears he is or will become once more. Not only that, but he views his godhood as a curse. A curse that he passed on to his son. Knowing the perpetual cycle of parricide that follows most, if not all gods, Kratos fears what his son will become due to the divine nature he passed on to him. However, through finally connecting with his son and embracing what he is, not a monster, but a god, does he finally find his equilibrium. He sees everything he once was and finally realizes that the answer isn't by avoiding the past, but by embracing it and learning from his mistakes to not become a better god, but a better man. On the flip side, Atreus, unaware of who his father truly is, resents him. Through his eyes, his father wants nothing to do with him. He only knows his father to be distant for some unknown reason. As a kid, he internalizes this disdain and blames himself. He thinks he's the issue and just wants to be better. But by traveling with his father, he learns it's not that simple. He sees the goodness buried deep within his father and wishes he was better because he knows he can be. However, this is Atreus looking at his father, thinking him to be immortal. Once he learns of his godhood, he sees Kratos' distant nature as his duty. That he, as a god, was above mortal quarrels, or in his words, We're sick of hearing about little people's little problems! He takes all of Kratos' negative attitude as a positive, as just how gods act, and becomes exactly what Kratos fears. His son becomes him. His son becomes the monster. This monster grows as Atreus kills his first god, Modi. Atreus, now with the knowledge that he is a god, thinks everything Kratos has been teaching him has been about how to kill. Because as he's seen, read, and learned about gods, killing is second nature. And not just any killing, it's senseless, vain 
killing. Kratos realizes that all of the lessons he's been teaching his son have been misinterpreted, that his distant nature and hiding of the truth is creating a self-fulfilling prophecy. It's no fault unto Atreus, this is all he knows. He's a kid, a sponge. For all we know, throughout his whole life, he's only interacted with Kratos and Faye. Kids are reflections of their environment and of their parents. So Kratos displaying only his negative side to his son results in his son only exhibiting his negative traits. Like I said, it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. Were it not for Kratos' relearning his humanity, revealing the truth, and speaking to his son as a man, not a god, does Atreus learn what it truly means to be a god? It's not about killing, it's not about perpetuating the cycle of violence, and it's not about him becoming a monster. As a god, it's his duty to be better, to learn what it means to be a man and a god and find the equilibrium between the two and to be better than both. With all that being said, all Kratos has learned and gone through with his son and refinding his humanity, the question still stands, does he deserve it? While yes, he has learned from his mistakes and has grown and become a better man, his past is still a factor. He's decided to no longer run from his past and embrace his mistakes and learn from them. He had a son that hopefully will also learn from the sins of his father and be a better and stronger man and God because of it. Kratos has made amends with himself, but the question still stands, does he deserve it? Or does this mean that Kratos is ready to embrace all the consequences of his actions and accept his comeuppance? Maybe, but also maybe not. In a blink and you'll miss it moment, Kratos finds a vase depicting his bloody crusade throughout Olympus. It's only when you look on the back of the vase, you'll see depictions of men rebuilding Greece. While Kratos' rampage caused an apocalyptic event for Greece, killing many innocent Greeks in the process, it didn't destroy everything, despite him believing so. Greece was able to survive and rebuild without the meddling of gods. If anything, Kratos may have helped Greece. No longer will gods interfere in mortal affairs, tricking, killing, and defiling them. Now, because of Kratos, Greece can truly flourish on its own, its fate in the hands of mortals. While this doesn't completely exonerate Kratos, it is something to think about. His just dues may be less so than he believes. Through Kratos' journey with Atreus, he truly finds his second chance. His second chance at being a father, at being a god, and most importantly, at being a good man. In gaining this second chance, Kratos is able to teach his son to be better and to end the cycle. Atreus is the future. And because of Kratos, he ensured that the future is bright and not drenched in blood. All because they are each other's second chance. Thanks for watching.